welcome to Cameron plus Deanna. Um, today we have a very special stream because after about three years, uh, my copy of Frosthaven has finally arrived. Um, this was a Kickstarter that went up um, pretty early 2022 or 2020. Um, I would think it was like April or May. And through everything that went on, obviously got hit with a lot of delays as there were changes to um, supply chain and all of that kind of stuff. But it is finally here. Um, and so we're going to be diving into unboxing that today on stream. And so with all of that kind of going, one of the things that I wanted to do, and I meant to have this ready and I did not, um, One of the things that I wanted to talk about kind of was as this game as a whole. And so um, part of that is, of course, where we have come from. And so for people that may not know what Frosthaven even is, um, there's a game called Gloomhaven that came out um, and for a very long time um, was ranked as like the top board game of all time. Uh, when you look at sites like Board Game Geek and things like that, uh, essentially it was, you kind of think of it as like D&D &D in a box where you don't need a DM, but there's a whole lot of sessions or scenarios that you play through as you progress through the story. Um, it's a tactical co-op cooperative game. Uh, and so it kind of has like choose your own adventure vibes because of all of that. And so... Um, like I said, for a long time, it's been kind of considered one of the best um, best board games out there um, when you look at like rankings and stuff like that. And then a couple of years ago, um, they came out with a game called Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, which we've actually streamed a couple times here on the channel, Deanna and I playing, which is a much like smaller selection um, when it comes to the game. Instead of being hundreds of scenarios, it was only 25 uh, I say only 25, like, but it was 25 scenarios, um, much smaller amount of characters versus all of the ones that were in, um, that were in Gloomhaven. Um, and then kind of through all of that, this Kickstarter was going, um, and, um, we were working on getting Frosthaven, which is, uh, like I said, basically a, a sequel, standalone sequel, um, to the Gloomhaven game. So we're set in the same world. We had the same like types of characters. And so there's a lot going on here. And so with the game being like story driven, um, as we do the unboxing today, we're actually not going to unbox everything um, because that would give things away. And so this is one of the few board games that like has spoilers. And so uh, we're going to actually not be diving into every little thing. Um, one of my goals eventually is to actually stream this on the channel. Um, I don't know if we'll stream all of the scenarios or whatever. Um, we may just kind of play some uh, and just kind of have reg regular check-ins on where we're at in the campaign. Uh, but yeah, one of the goals is that once we get uh, a better space for it, uh, that we'll be able to be playing more of this game on stream. Um what else did I want to say? Um, hopefully now that Kickstarters are being fulfilled, we will actually be starting to see the game hit shelves so you can buy it at your LGS. Um, and hopefully there's going to be a long tail market for it, just like there has been for Gloomhaven with, um, with more and more people diving into that game and picking it up. And so I would also guess there's going to like eventually be a digital version for it, just like there's a digital version for Gloomhaven. My understanding is that the rule, there are like some slight differences in the rules. Um, and so they're not going to be like a one to one, but it seems like for the most part, they will be the same or similar enough that if you've played one, you can pick up the other and kind of dive into what the game is all about. And so, uh, yeah, with all that said, we're going to switch over, uh, look at our other view, get a top down view of the game itself as we unbox. And then once we get through all of this, we're actually going to get back and play a little bit of Fire Emblem if we have time left over, which I think we should when it comes to our normal, our normal podcast, our normal podcast, our normal string length for Sunday. And so we'll dive in, um, kind of go through all of that and chat through it all. And so um, was there anything else I wanted to say about that? 
I don't think so. Okay, so let's go and pivot over to our to our top-down view of it. So this is the back of the box. Um, I'm gonna do my best to like stay in camera and keep things good here. If issues happen, here we are. Feel free to call us stuff out in chat, but I wanna do my best to kind of get like an overview of what's in the game. Um, so that way, if, um, if it's something that you're interested in, you kind of get to see a, the gist of it. And so, so like I said, this is the back that says, the only outpost in the unforgiving North is on the brink of destruction. Harried, harried by vicious, mysterious threats on all sides, Frosthaven would need great warriors and leaders to survive the coming winter. Unfortunately, all it has is you, a group of haunted wanderers with nowhere left to go. Can you fight back the invaders, build a thriving community, or will the Frost claim it all? And then over here, Frosthaven is a cooperative campaign made of tactical combat and branching narratives in a unique fantasy world. You will take your party of hardened mercenaries through a, a vast series of scenarios offering deep gameplay without dice against fully automated enemies. Along the way, you will build up the outpost of Frosthaven, protecting its civilians from attack through a multitude of useful structures. Through a multitude of, yeah. Um, inevitably, your mercenaries will retire and you will continue the adventures by selecting new characters from the 17 different classes available. The possibilities um, of the North are near endless and this is just waiting to be explored. And so... I should also say this is definitely not going to be a rules explanation um, since we're unboxing. There's other videos out there if you're interested in something like that, um, but we are definitely not going to be doing that here. And so, uh, and then the game has 138 scenarios, 17 playable characters, uh, which was kind of interesting uh, because there was supposed to only be 16, but at the last minute, the the game was very close to breaking either the board game record for the biggest Kickstarter or the um, the actual record for biggest Kickstarter. I, mean, I don't really remember which one it was. I'm pretty, I think it was just within the board games, but I 100% could be wrong there. And so as like a last 24-hour stretch goal, um, they added that if they could set the record, they would add a 17th playable character, uh, which I think is a very cool incentive. I think it, like it's definitely that kind of thing. Like, hey, we didn't necessarily plan to do this, but we're so close to this record. Let's go for it. Um, and kind of use this as a final push to get people on board. Um, then there's over 2,500 cards, 64 different enemy types. There's an evolving map board and then 18 detailed plastic miniatures. So something there that's interesting is the 17 playable classes, but only 18 miniatures, which means that there's a miniature of one, or there's a single miniature that is not a playable character. So, I don't know. That just seems kind of strange to me. I was definitely expecting it to be like one-to-one, -one, but like, here we are. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, with all of that, let's go ahead and cut the tape, and we're going to get into the game. After we cut this, I will have to flip it over. You will hopefully not like spill it all over the table as we get the top off and hopefully I will not look like a fool doing this so oh I also want to call out just while we're here we got this really cool artwork on the side the, the side of the box some of the playable characters. I think these are the starting classes so as the box said there's 17 different classes and as you complete certain things those characters will retire and then how they retire um will affect what other classes that you um that you have and that you unlock and so and sorry and we're flipping right back to the back so i just noticed something cool so i'm not like a huge first printing fan like in terms of having to have it but it is pretty cool that this is the first printing and so um uh, that is very exciting Oh, and then we'll go one more and we'll take off the top and then look around a little bit better at it. Okay. So when I was, I was trying to just like make sure I could get the top off, not realizing that it was taped um, before the stream. And I was like, oh, definitely gonna need to do something about that.
we just hold it here and it'll eventually fall out <laughs> by the weight of the game. Almost there? Yes, there we go. Okay, um, so here is the inside. I like that we have a tray. Uh, like I said, this is my first time going through any of this, so we're gonna kind of see how things go. Um, oh, and then what I wanted to say, I hope this isn't gonna be too close. It's very close. Uh, one of the things that I like is when games take and like pay attention to the side of their box, because that's actually typically what you're gonna see when the game is on the shelf. Most games aren't going to actually sit like facing forward on the shelf, like top down. And so I think it's very cool when a game actually pays attention to that. So let me just put this down here. We're gonna use the top of the box to move stuff into. And so, and then, let's see, is there gonna be an easy way for me to show this without? I'll show it afterwards. There's stuff on the side of the box, like all around the, the, the actual inside here. We'll look at that later on. And so, so it says, welcome to Frosthaven. Stop, read this before you do anything else. There's a significant number of components in this box and it's important to make sure they are organized before your first game. This guide will show you how to organize everything so that you can start playing as quickly as possible. Believe this, this guide, there are four books, A, five sticker sheets, B, a campaign tracking, a pad of campaign sheets, C, a map board, D, uh, do not break the seal on the puzzle block book or look too closely at the sticker sheets until instructed to do so. Next to these, you'll find two trays with lids. Remove the smaller token tray from the larger token tray and set them aside. Beneath these, you'll find the um, alchemy chart, interesting, five scenario flow charts, and then, uh, which can be set aside for now. Next, you'll find a stack of 27 punch boards, which you can remove and start punching. As you remove various cardboard components from the punch board, sort them as described on the next page. Okay, so we're not gonna read through all of this, but like, this is one of the things that I love about this game is, uh, and I talked about this with Gloom or with Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, is that the instructions for that game are the best instructions out there when it comes to a board game. Like, I don't know of a single game that teaches you the game as well as Gloomhaven does. And so I'm just very excited uh, to kind of get to go through and see what we're all about here. And so, um, it should be pretty cool. And then people in chat, if y'all do have any questions as we go, um, please hop in to chat. I'm by no means an expert on Gloomhaven, um, but um, very excited to answer anything that I can and give my opinion. Um, and then, um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, sorry, actually, before we get going. There's a couple other things that I got from the Kickstarter, kind of before we dive into the main game. So show these up here so this is the solo scenarios so this can um the solo scenarios contain 17 or for the 17 classes of frost haven that can be played with only the corresponding class these scenarios um, have no scenario numbers locations or stickers to go on the campaign map you should not encounter a road event before coming there all characters attempting the scenarios must be at least level five and match the icon of the scenario um, they are harder than normal scenarios and they are designed to test your skill and knowledge of the class. And so then the reward for each scenario is an item that is exclusive to the scenarios class. When you gain the item, uh, if you don't want it, you can gain one perk mark instead. Um, these items cannot be sold. And when a character with one of these items retires, the item goes back into the unavailable item supply. And so this is one of like the stretch goals that I think is really cool. Like you get your own, this like little pack of cards over here. Um, and this kind of reminds me of the Gloomhaven PC game that like whenever you unlocked a new class there, it kind of gave you a, like an introductory mission to that character. Then this is kind of the like leveled up version of that. Like this is intended as it says, like test your knowledge of the character. So this is kind of something that like, as you've been playing with them, you can then like double back and actually go into. So very excited to do that. And then I also picked up the removable sticker set. And so these are uh, removable vinyl stickers for locations, buildings, campaign, enhancements, and seals. So this is just an option for if you wanted to like reset the game, 
like the way that it works is um, as you explore, you unlock new stuff. And so some people will actually like make shadow boxes and stuff like this of their campaign maps. I wanted to pick this up just for kind of the, to have the option of it. I don't know if I'm going to actually end up using this versus the actual stickers. Um, but, uh, cause I don't necessarily know if I'm going to even like try to resell this. Um, I may do it. And which is again, why I wanted to get the removable stickers. Um, but I liked that option of having, of having that versus having to, um, use the real ones. And so, and then the last two things before we actually dive into the rest of the box is, uh, as part of the Kickstarter, you could buy, uh, um, inlay stuff. So this is the um, folded space map archive. And so this is to do uh, what this is to do. Wow. The point of this is to track your um, map tiles and keep them in a more organized fashion rather than the fashion that's inside of the box. Um, and then um, also picked up, let's get this out of the way. Um, also picked up the folded space um, here we go, you kind of see the back here. Um, the folded space insert. And so this is something that's, they, they're made out of foam and this is something that you build. Uh, and it's a, a additional way that you can organize the game itself. And so I'm probably gonna be using this rather than what's in the box if there's a difference. Um, I picked this up for Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and it was really nice to have. And so when I saw that there was the option for the folded space one, um, I wanted to pick that up. Um, I like these because since they are foam, they're not like 8,000 pounds. Um, like I have some broken token organizers for some of my games like Terraforming Mars. Um, and the issue there is that it is so heavy with that extra thing in it that it can just make it pretty rough to carry and to move around. And when like the base game of Gloomhaven is about 30 pounds, the last thing that I wanted to do was add additional weight to that. And so, so we went with the folded token thing because, or not folded, but folded spaces. Um, thing because of that. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so like I said, we're, we're going to come back and look at this. Um, I'll look a little bit more off stream. Here is the rule book. And then we got like a pretty good length. I mean, that's probably like a quarter inch, just judging by, um, judging by very simple measurements. Um, we're not going to look too much into it because again, I do want to avoid spoilers on this, but um, let me do a quick uh, oh yeah, so here, this is what I, this is one of the things I think is cool. So getting started, uh, and then it's gonna tell you like the six starting classes. Every class has an icon, and these are what the fans call them um, to kind of avoid giving away what the ac they actually are. Um, and so you'll, uh, so it's kind of a cool thing that the fans do just as a way of, again, uh, keeping spoilers out of like the normal discussion. And it's kind of cool to see that like I've been a part of like the Gloomhaven subreddit and I have no clue what all the classes are because people use the symbol words rather than saying what they are or market spoilers accordingly. And so like the actual fandom here seems really cool in that regard of like wanting to avoid giving um, spoilers for people. Um, over here, it talks about how you can create your character, um, the things that you need. They have the boxes, we'll look more at those in a moment. Um, and then this kind of goes through the idea of how you like actually build, build and play your characters. And so um, here's some other things on the beginning scenarios. Um, and kind of just like describing what is going on. And so again, very excited. The Jaws of the Lion rule book is one of my favorite rule books that I've ever seen. And so um, this is the sealed puzzle book that we're going to, of course, not open. And then this is the scenario book. And then here is another scenario book. And so these are very hefty. Um, let me see. I, want, I don't want to like dig into them too deep, but, uh, but yeah. So like here on this first page, it kind of gives you your introduction. And then as your reward, you unlock the first scenario, which is the one over here. And then, these books kind of tell you how to set up the game, um, how to set up the, the, the enemies that you're gonna be fighting against and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty in, in, in depth in that regard. And so then if we look at just like, 
the actual size of these between the the rule book is in the back and then here are the two scenario books like it's a pretty substantial about amount of materials um, that they have there okay so now we have the campaign sheet or sheets plural um, so it's possible that every character will get one of these I don't 100% know but this is tracking like the party name I guess that leads me to believe it's individual if it's uh, or it's one per the group since it has party name um, you're tracking the seasons up here there's summer and winter and then um, kind of ha as your parks for, or perks for like the town guards um, the supply of frost haven itself there's some abilities over here um, and then like the prosperity track which i think affects from what i've heard from the first game um, affects what your um like what shops sell and things like that. And then over here at the bottom, this is the retired characters. And so that is something pretty fun. Um, like I said, I think that, well, the primary way that you unlock new characters is by having a different character retire. Uh, and so this is kind of a cool way of tracking who is playing or who has played um, and what the character was that retired. Um, and I think when a character retires, you can like reset them um, reset them, put their bunny ears in. Uh, and if you do that, they basically just go back to level one and somebody else could play that character or you could play them again if you wanted to. I could be wrong there. Um, and then, uh, but I think that's how it works. Again, it could be 100% wrong. Um, this map board is way bigger than I anticipated. Um, and so here we have the outpost of Frosthaven here at the bottom. And then going up here, we have like mountains and stuff. The northern coast. Sorry, pretty sure I booped the mic there. Um, and so there's definitely like a lot there. Um, I'm very excited to kind of dive into all of this. Just kind of using Chunk the Hut. How's it going? Why isn't Lemur? How are you as well? Um, and so, um, so like here we have like the barracks. This is the logging camp workshop. And then like around the city, there's like, um, I hope commercials will give wise in a second. Chunk, when, when should I be over to play? Hey, um, we got to figure out what we're doing for space for this and how we're going to go through it. Um, one of the things that I was talking about earlier um, was 138 scenarios of it. And I did not like share this math, but like the way, what they say is that every scenario should take about 30 minutes per player. Um, so if you're playing with like a group of two, like this is like a 140 hour board game to get through, assuming you succeed at every scenario on your first try. Um, I don't know if you can fail, but like when we were streaming Gloomhaven, um, Jaws of the Lion, we failed one scenario, I think twice. I mean, had to reset it to do it again. Um, I don't know if that'll be different here, if there's going to actually just be punishments for if you fail. But I think in general, you're encouraged that you can just retry it until you succeed. But I could be wrong there. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a whole bunch of this game. And you know what? I don't know if we're going to have people like come in and out, like in the sense of like have some friends that are like, hey, if um, we're playing on this day, people can come over. They have their character hop in and play. Or if it's going to kind of just be um, Deanna and I play it or maybe even me doing some solo. I don't really know how it's going to like work out, but. I really want to play a whole bunch of this, and so um, very excited about the whole thing. Also, shout out to this like goat that we have down here in the corner. Um, and then over here, what do we have? We have the wall, the mining camp. Um, here's another wall. Craftsman, hunter's lodge, hunting lodge, wall again, and the alchemist. And so then, I don't know if y'all can see them well, but like here there's the little letter F. This looks like 83, 81. And so that's what those stickers are, um, is that as you do stuff, you'll get something that'll say, hey, put this building or put this sticker on place F or on place 42. Um, so you'll actually go through and that, that's what the stickers are for. It's going to actually like physically affect the board. Um, and that's kind of like what I was saying. Some people will actually like make really cool shadow boxes of what their campaign, campaign looked like. Um, it's a very cool touch. Um, okay. And so here... <laughs> We have, okay, let's keep going, keep going. Okay, so what is this? Um, some challenges, 
This looks like an explanation of some of the, oh, this must be something that changes. These are stickers. Um, so these stickers, oh yeah, it goes on page four. Uh, it's the sticker four goes on page 12. And so uh, we're not gonna necessarily dig too deep into those, but that's what that's about. Um, and then here we have a bunch more stickers. These are like upgrade icons. Um, it would be terrible if they slipped a Kobayashi Maru in there. I would not put it past them, I like to do something like that. Um, there's definitely some fun stuff that they'll get into when it comes to those designs. And something that's really cool is they actually had fans design some of the scenarios. So some people that were like prominent in the community um, or prominent in like the board game circles actually got to design a scenario for the game itself. And so I think that that is super cool. I'd, I'd love to do something like that. I do not necessarily have any like board game design aspirations, but like getting to come in and work on a scenario would be super cool. Um, so here we have our enhancement stickers. So the idea here is certain perks will let you like power up your cards. Uh, I think from playing the, the video game or the PC game version, that's how it worked. And so I think that's what's going to be here. Um, so I think these will go on your cards and they'll do things like power it up, give you more damage, make it so you can leap, um, give it elements or any element, uh, and then kind of give you other powers as you go through. And so I think that's the thing there. Um, we're not going to look too much at this next page because it does have like location stickers and stuff like that. Oh, and then this is the alchemist thing that we were looking at. Uh, that was talked about. So I have no clue what this is going to do, uh, but there must be some way that we're going to be like tracking herbs and stuff like that. Um, also, is there a, this starts at two. Is there a one? I wonder if that's this thing here. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited for this. Again, there's just like so much to this game that you kind of have to go through it. I also have to remember how to put all this back in the box, which is, you know, going to be a struggle. But Chunk, Wisent, how's y'all Sunday going? I hope it's been good so far. Okay, and then here is that divider. Um, are y'all excited for The Last of Us tonight? Um, Wisent, I'm not 100% sure if you're watching it, but I know Chunk is, and we'll be watching tonight. Very excited. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's like a two-layer thing. I love it when games give you organizers like this in it. I assume this will be incorporated into the folded spaces thing. Um, but I'm not actually sure if it's going to be, but I hope so. Um, here's a silicone thing. Do not eat, throw away. Cool. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so all of that goes on top of this thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the scenario board. And so this is kind of like, it's almost like a, um, you are left behind hype. Um, so this is almost like a, um, advent calendar. So like here you'll start at scenario one and then this will come off and then it, the path branches to two and three or two or three, and then you kind of go in. And so this is going to be like moving around. And so the scenarios are numbered, but you actually won't encounter them in that numbered order necessarily. So like here, if I had to guess, like if we, if, um, we completed scenario one, we would go to three based on something or two based on something else. And we would never see what was on the other scenario. Um, and so you can kind you can actually like not participate in every single thing that goes on. Oh, and this just like keeps going. Um, but yes, yeah, so like these fit together here. We're not going to go through all of them. Um, but like these fit together and this is like the, the board that you're going through. And so, because uh, I think it just keeps going. Yeah, I think there's five of these. Three. Okay, four. Five, yeah. And so here's the, oh, and here's the last one. It goes all the way to 137. And so, okay. And then here, this next big chunk is all of the punch boards. So we're, I'm going to set these aside for now, then we're going to come back to them. By a side, I mean like literally put them in my lap because I don't know where else to do with them. <laughs> okay. Then down here, we get the bulk of our cards as well as the long boxes for the playable characters. Uh, and so each one of these represents a different character. So like if we go back to the beginning, I think it's these six, these first six. 
counting is hard. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I was right. These six are your starting classes. Um, um, was it Gloomhaven or Stormhaven that you played that you played with me? Um, I don't know, Chunk. I did not have Gloomhaven uh, either version when I was in Connecticut, and so uh, we did play the Pathfinder card game. Is that what you're thinking of? Where we actually like had like a deck of cards and we're going through scenarios. That is one that we played. I still have that, and I really want to play more of that as well. That one was really cool. Um, I'm actually looking to play Pathfinder soon, and I'm going to be playing the Magus, which is the same class I was playing when we did that. Um, but yeah, like we had a good time. I think it was us, um, Gary, and Isaac. Um, we played through a, uh, several scenarios of that. That was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Um, so I'm here again. We're not going to dive in too much to anything because I don't want to necessarily go through spoilers, but like we're going to kind of just talk through what are some of the things over here. So like these are, let's go a little closer. These are the road cards. And so the idea of these is like something happens on your way to the scenario or to the uh, mission that you're on and then it'll give you options so like option one is to uh, for this one is like follow the trail or option b is to uh, follow a different trail so there's like a branching path i assume there without reading too much into it then over here we have an another batch of road cards and so i assume when you're like on your way to a location it'll say reference card blah 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 um, and that's how you know which one of these to come at. Then these are the outpost cards. Um, and so I don't know for sure when you'll get these, but in Jaws the Lion, you got like a certain like thing around the city of Gloomhaven after you finished a mission. Uh, so it's possible that that's what these outpost cards are. So it looks like these sections are outpost. These sections are road. Um, and then let's go over here. We have... <laughs> They gave you. They gave us their our own bags. Highly appreciative. That's probably what you're thinking of. Sorry, uh, thought it was. No, you're good, John. Good question. Um, and then so that's a whole bunch of bags. Here's a bunch of standees um, for the enemies and stuff that you're fighting on a mission. Um, and then what do we have here? This these are some items, I guess. This one has like a map thing on the back. We got a mirror. Don't really know what's up with that. Again, don't want to dig, dig too deep into it yet. These are going to be the attack decks. And so it's possible this is like both are the player deck and the... Now, I'd assume the player deck is in here. Uh, but this is probably like the monster deck. And so the way that the game works is that there's no dice to determine if you hit or miss like there is in D&D &D or Pathfinder. Uh, but instead, you have a deck of cards. Every player has their own, and then the enemies all share one. And so when you get something like a plus zero, that means that the attack does whatever it says on the card plus a zero an extra zero damage. Um, but you can get things like special abilities, like, hey, this deals one extra damage, and you get to draw the next card and add that onto it, or like one extra damage, and it ga you gain a fire element or something like that, imbue a fire into the, into the sky or into the, the setting. Let's move that back over. Um, and so there's some pretty cool stuff there um, in terms of what you can do. Um, next we have, oh, another. Oh, oh, this one says M. So this must be the monster one. Um, I'm not sure what one is, unless this is level one. And maybe we, again, I could have sworn we didn't share a deck, but I could be wrong. Um, my guess is this is the town guard because it matches the symbol there. And so, oh, that's upside down. And so then this is like the town's ability to defend itself. And then we have, again, I keep doing stuff backwards. We have a letter uh, or scroll, and then on the back it's armor testing. Then we have, um, oh, oh, these are the, every mission you're given two like sec secret objectives and you keep one. And if you complete that secret objective, you get some bonus for completing it. And that looks to be what those are. Then we have, um, must be loot or tre like a treasure. Oops, dropped it. 
a treasure deck. Uh, this has a pouch on this side, and that looks like a coin on the other. Here we have items. Um, and so some items are numbered. Like, I don't, let's get closer. So like this top card is item 65. Um, and so there may be something that says like, when you loot this chest, get item 65 or something like that. Locksteady, how you doing? Um, oh, and then the other side is just like a spiked collar. And so um, not really sure what it does. During your turn, do something. Um, and so um, I'm not caught up on what all the symbols mean. Uh, so in here then, Locke, how's your Sunday? Hope you're having a good one. It's great to have you here. These look to be dividers for the cards. Uh, and so you have like an organization stuff going on. It's going, how's the unboxing? This game is a behemoth. Um, like I didn't actually like go through this, but just like, like for context, it's about the length of my arm that way. And it's like elbow to wrist the other way. Um, so like, like this box is giant. And then it's, and y'all obviously can't see, but it's like elbow to here on me in terms of height. So like, um, it is massive. Um, I didn't tell this story. We're going to go to just chatting. Um, I didn't tell this story. So um, the base game itself weighs about 30 pounds. Um, so that's something. And then with the other stuff that I was showing earlier, the dividers, the organizer, and then like the extra stuff that came with it. Um, I think the shipped weight for it was about 40 something pounds. Um, and it got delivered to the mail room at our apartment complex, you know, as most things do. I'm just thankful it didn't get delivered to the other, uh, the other apartments, like anywhere else. It actually like went to the mail room. So that was nice. And it was so, it was the, uh, it was the box was so big it barely fit in the largest locker that we had, um, like it was like crammed in there, um, and so I had to like shimmy it out. And on my way to get it, I had thought to myself, should I drive over here? Like, it's not far away. But I was like, this is gonna be like a forty pound box. Should I do that? I'm like, nah, I can carry it. And I gotta tell you, carrying this like massive, like like massive forty something pound box, like in flip flops, because you know I was too dumb to put on shoes. Uh, carrying this massive box back to the apartment and then like upstairs and stuff. Oh man, it did not go great. It was not the proudest I'd ever been in my life. Um, just trying to get it all the way back. I did lose my flip flop at one point. Had to go back and get that. So like that that occurred. Um, that's about the nicest thing I can say there. Um, and then finally got it inside. The actual box that it came in is probably about the size of like my chest, like hips to shoulders. And it was so big that there was a box within it that had the game in it. Like the game had its own box within the bigger box that it shipped in. Um, and yeah, oh man, it was a process getting it upstairs. Uh, and then like wanting to make sure that I was ready. I'd considered leaving it in the box it arrived in uh, and doing like the full on unboxing, but like space considerations, that just wasn't going to be possible. Um, I just like didn't trust um, like the ability to get a setup that would adequately like display me trying to get everything out of the box. But maybe in the future, that's something that we'll be able to do. Um, when, if I ever get another giant Kickstarter like this, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was effort to get this up the stairs. Um, and even like, even like getting the picture for it, I was like, oh man, like holding this was not the best. This is the type of thing that I'm very ho much hoping that I can get like a dedicated spot for it and then just never move it. Uh, and so that's kind of what we're hoping for when it comes to this. Okay, let's get back to the to top down um, and we'll keep going through. Um, but yeah, effort occurred. And so, um, oh yeah, so we have over here, we have our dividers and then we have a giant stack of cards here. Um, oh, so these must be more items. Yeah, and so again, like I don't know if the colors mean anything, um, but this looks to be item 192. Um, but like, look at this, like we're looking at, it's about like the size of my hand in terms of just those cards. Uh, and it's like, 
uh, we're using everything except the metric system over here, of course. So this is like the size of six of these boxes. Um, it probably is about the size of my mouse. Yeah, it's about the size of my mouse. Um, so yeah, that's something. And then over here we have, oh, okay. So, oh, sorry, I thought I heard something. It was another silicone thing. So then these are the boss cards. And so like normal monsters will all use the same deck, um, but bosses, Bosses either add cards to that deck or get their own. I want to say they get their own, but I could be wrong there. Um, and so this is that's what this is. And again, another pretty giant stack of cards. Almost as many as there is items. There's like a little bit of a gap there. Um, but yeah, so that's what that is. Uh, and then we're not going to dig dive into any of these because I don't want to necessarily show them off. Um, and that, But yeah, so here are these. Like they're sealed like envelope style. And so you can just kind of like open it up if this is the class that you're gonna pick. Um, and then there's like the stuff in it that's unique to that class. Like we'll do a little top down view because there shouldn't be any spoilers there. But like each one of these boxes is like filled with stuff for that class, um, including like the classes cards and stuff like that. And so, um, Chung, I had, uh, you had your bean boozled last night. It's got liver and onions and then later rotten eggs. Oh man, that's, I was there for the liver and onions. Um, and oh man, you fought through it like a champ. Like, yeah, that was, that looked very rough. Happy to not be doing the being boozled over here. Um, and then I think that's going to be. Oh, I was going to say, I think that's going to be everything, but wait, there's more. Um, okay. Let's get this out of the way. By out of the way again, I mean to my lap because I literally don't have any other room. Okay. Um, so over here on the right-hand side, these are going to be the minis um, for the characters themselves. So again, I'm not going to get it out. This is a, but yeah, so you'll pop that open. Within this is the mini. I like how I was like, I'm not going to open this, and then I immediately tried to open it. Um, and so my guess is characters like this one, of course I'm blocking it with my hand, that are longer than the other ones. They have some sort of gimmick uh, that allows them to maybe get an extra thing or something. Uh, not really sure exactly what's going on there. Then over here, these are the health and experience trackers. So the way that it works is like based on your level, you may start with 10 HP. Uh, and then as you get hit, um, your HP will go down. Um, and then similarly, similarly, over here is your experience. So at the end of the scenario, you cash in and get in the amount of experience that you earn during that scenario. And so um, if you were to earn like 10 experience, you would gain that and that would go onto your character sheet, but um, it, you don't actually get the experience until you finish the scenario. At least that's how it was in Jaws of the Lion. Then over here, we have the actual monster cards. So the way that these work is um, the cards are double-sided, but there's really like eight sides to them. And so we'll use like this top card with the chaos demon as the example. So like here's the level one chaos demon and you put it in the slider like this if you're fighting level zeros. Um, and then as it levels up or as you level up, the enemies get harder. And so the card like turns around and then that gets uh, all the way up in this case to level three. Um, and so then there's, there are some, there is, blah, 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 blah. there are some things on the back. We're not going to pay too close of attention to that because um, it looks very fancy, but that's kind of the idea there. And then there's also the, um, the basic side um, as well as the advanced side, which is the left and right. Um, let's see, Rotten, um, oh, Lux says, Rotten Egg wasn't the worst for you, um, but it was bad. Um, Chunk says, I should do it, it's fun. He'll gift me a set. Yeah, we're good. Um, Livers and Onions is horrible, and then we need to Rotten Eggs, it just kind of combined with it. Ugh. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, and so, so like this thing, it has 7 HP if it's the regular version, or 10 if it's the elite version. Um, three movement versus four movement, and then two attack versus three attack. Um, and it looks like they both muddle, if I'm remembering my symbols correctly. Um, and then compare that to like the level one, 
it's now base HP level eight or a base HP of eight and then of 12 for the elite. So like they're getting harder as you go on. And so, um, and then the attack is each one higher, it looks like. And so uh, there's definitely a lot to that just in terms of like <laughs> surviving and keeping going. And then on these, um, there are little dividers. And so this is how you track what you're fighting or where you deal your damage. And so like the actual minis, which we'll see in a little bit, um, the actual minis for these are numbered or standees, I guess. Um, and so if you damage number one, you put those effects in this area and all the way around. And then much to the, the scare of people involved, um, it goes all the way to 10. So like, it looks like, so you could have a scenario where you're fighting a whole bunch of enemies um, all at once. And so, I don't like that there seem to only be two one through sixes and a whole bunch of one through tens. Do not like that one bit. Um, that seems stressful. Okay, let's put these back over here. Um, those fit sideways, it looks like. Okay, and then what do we have here? Okay, so then here we have the actual buildings for Frosthaven. And so this is the craftsman that we saw um, on the map. So this one, surprise, crafts items. And then it looks like down here, if I had to guess, this is what it takes to upgrade it to the other side. Uh, yeah, because level it says level one up here. Um, and then add, looks like items one to 10 to the item supply. So once you unlock this, you get access to those items out of out of this big stack, so. Um, uh, and then over here, this is the barracks, but this is like of the level four version of the barracks. And so I'm not going to dig too much, too deep into that. Cause I don't want to meta game myself. Then what do we have here? This looks to be the, I uh, just, cause it says the study of plants, um, uh, just feed been boozled to the enemies. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I think this could be like the alchemy thing, but it could be something completely different. Um, and then down here, it looks like it's, it has like a letter symbol. And so it's directing you to go get something. Um, and then here, um, I don't know what this is, but it looks very interesting. It says tracks and has a whole bunch of symbols on it. So I don't know if this is going to be like setting up a scenario or is going to be setting up like, um, like a side thing that goes with something. Um, like with Jaws of the Lion, there were times where like there was the main scenario book and then there was a secondary scenario book because some of the maps were too big to be printed in the book itself. Um, so I'm wondering if that's something like that where they like ran out of space in the book itself. So you have these like cards as additional descriptors for what's going on. Um, then it looks like over here, the last thing that we have are some more classes. Yeah. So those are that one. So these, again, must be classes that have some other bonus like shenanigan that they're up to. Um, and that's why their boxes are different than the, the normal like um, tall skinny ones. And so, um, but yeah, that should, I would assume be everything. Just grab the middle out of these and just make sure that there's nothing else. Yeah, that looks to be it. So, um, so that's gonna be the base game. We're gonna start putting some stuff back in it. Uh, we're going to go uh, that there. There we go. Um, we are not sitting level. Did I do something wrong? The real Frost Haven is putting stuff back in the box. I feel like I did something wrong over here. Um, and that's what's tripping things up. Um, can't really see over there. Like is, oops, is one of these supposed to go in the bottom? No, it does not fit. What if we, and it shouldn't matter which one is on top, right? If it's the cards or the, Might have to go figure this out off stream. Oops. Okay. 
Uh, it's one of those boxes that keeps going, yes. Um, and then, like, sometimes escape room games do this, where it's like, now go look in the box and find something. And there'll be, like, a hidden compartment that you're like, it's like, oh, go look under this thing, uh, and there'll be something there. I have no idea if Gloomhaven does that, but it's kind of the, like, this was here the whole time. Oh, and did we miss this? Uh, oh, these are the pl player reference things. Okay. Um, cue the Tetris music, yes. I cannot figure out what's going on there. What if we move this to this side? There we go. We got it. It goes in the middle. That's what I was doing wrong. Um, oh, did we look at these? Oh, these are just like the scenario envelopes or something. So this is 21. And then this is some that you actually like open um, when the game tells you to get those. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. Can we get this in now? To continue the Tetris joke, we got our, yes, that, that is what we did wrong earlier. Okay. To continue the Tetris joke, we have like our, our L piece that we have to get in. And so, okay. So then here, we're gonna do a quick glance through some of the punch boards. Um, again, don't really wanna go into anything too deep, although obviously like there's probably not gonna be any spoilers here since you have to punch them all out. Um, but kind of just talking through them. Oop, almost dropped the big stack. Um, oh, and so and for reference, there's this many of them. So there's gonna be a whole lot of punching things out. Um, and then like here we have, so we have damage, we have the elements for the tracker. Um, this looks like snow or some sort of obstacle. Here are the map pieces, um, logs, bigger damage, um, blessing versus curse down here in the corner. Um, on the next one, again, some more map pieces, stuff like that. Um, a whole bunch of symbols. There's a damage up here for a hundred. Um, that really scares me. Uh, oops, accidentally punched something out. Um, the fact that something could have more than 100 health um, really worries me. Um, let's see, anything else that like kind of jumps out? We got a whole bunch of these bags. Not 100% sure what the bags are going to do. Uh, we got a little recycle symbol up here. I like it when devs do that. Um, and it's like, we didn't really need this space, but it got punched out. Please recycle stuff. Um, I know some games do like a, almost like a business card um, with some of the pieces. That's what Orange Nebula does. Um, it's like, we didn't need this space, but it had to be punched out for the other boards. So we put something cool in this, in this space. Again, some more like elemental looking symbols or like status symbols, I guess. Yeah, because it's strengthened, dis or pinned, I think is this one. I don't know the actual word for it, but you can't move. Um, and then like, yeah. Um, we got like a pipe thing. Okay, let's go take a look at this one. Here, a whole bunch of snow. Who could have guessed in a game called Frosthaven, there would be a whole bunch of snow pieces. Um, let's see. Oops. Trying to get this like on camera without like clobbering the box. A whole bunch more snow. Here are the IDs for some of the enemies. Um, here are the actual enemy tiles and stuff like that. And so um, keep going a little bit. Some more enemies over here. More map pieces. And so that is Frosthaven. And so before I go too much further, how do I actually want to do this? Oh, let's put things back in the box, actually. Um, continue the Tetris music, everyone. Um, snow was totally unexpected. Um, I never would have guessed that there could have been snow. Um, okay, well, I feel like I tried to put these in like the worst possible way. There we go. Okay, get that in. Okay, and so then after that, This is the real stream, is can I put it all back in the box? Uh, after that was those. And then I think.
think the next thing was the rule books, scenario books, all of that go over here. This goes here. And then, oh no, below these were the stickers, the alchemy thing. And with that, I think it's all back in the box. Um, okay, so before we switch back to just chatting and talk through stuff, I do wanna take off the camera real quick. We're gonna come around here to the side, see if I can like get a decent view on this. Uh, it looks like it is upside down. But this is like the side of the box. Again, I would love a way to actually like pivot and show this a little bit better, but let's see, can we, let's go here, transform, sorry, let me get there in the settings. Oh, I can't flip it because it's being used. Um, Will game, um, hard this, thanks for sharing. Um, excellent to find a copy to, excited to find a copy to play, but you should finish Gloomhaven. Yeah, I was kind of torn um, with this coming out. Let's see what's over on this side. Um, this looks like the actual fort type stuff. Um, so some very cool stuff. I was very torn since I have not played actual Gloomhaven. Um, let's go back to just chatting. Um, I was like, oh, should I like go back and play it? Like we haven't even finished Jaws of the Lion. Like, but. There's so much game there that I was like, you know what? We'll get there when we get there. Um, if we decide to dive all the way back in, um, we can go through and take in all of this stuff off. So like here is the box, uh, top of the box. And so again, I love the, let's go, we're over here now. I love that we get like characters and the actual art. Cause like I said, I feel like the side of the box is typically more important um, in terms of what is seen um, for games. Because um, this is probably the, the way that it's going to sit on my shelf. I'm probably not going to sit it like this. Um, unless, uh, does it actually fit? Uh, yeah, so it actually looks like you could slide the box like horizontally over the rest of it. So that may be a way to display it. Um, but for now, let's put it back in the box. Slow and steady. Gotta believe. Uh, and um, that is where we will, oh man, <laughs> for some reason I immediately forgot it was 30 pounds. Pivot this to the other side, and put it over there. So that's Frost Haven. Thank you everyone who hung out for the unboxing. Super excited to dive into this. Again, I'm not 100% sure what the plan is going to be um, in terms of streaming it, like I said, the, the biggest thing is we had to have the space for it. Um, I know one of the big things, the big criticisms that I've heard for Gloomhaven is that it is difficult to, um, to set up and tear down if you're trying to do that every single scenario. And so I really want to find a place that ideally we can just like leave it set up. Um, but if we're not leaving it set up long term, it's a place that we can leave it set up and play. Like maybe on Friday night, we could do a scenario, Saturday do two, Sunday do one, and then take a break. Something like that, um, I would really want us to be able to do just because there's so much going on that I would really want us to not have to like set it up and tear it down after every single one. Um, there's just so much there that um, even with like the organizers, that like I'm very excited to go and put together. Um, I'm just very worried about like that setup and tear down time and making sure we're using using that to our advantage. Cause like I've heard that it can take like 20 minutes just to set up the game. And so if that's the case, the last thing that I want us to do is to spend 20 minutes to play for an hour to then spend 20 more minutes to put it away. Um, and so I'm hoping that between the dividers and the organizers, um, we can actually get several plays in before we actually um, have to actually put it away. And so we'll see what that actually is going to look like. Uh, and like I said, when we're going to actually get to stream some of it. 
I at least want us to get some of it on stream because I really did enjoy when we were playing Jaws of the Line. It's possible that Deanna and I will like play the intro scenario on our own um, and then maybe come back in and play it um, play it again on stream just to kind of make it so we can help show what it's about or uh, kind of jump in straight to the first scenario after doing the tutorial on our own. We'll just kind of have to wait and see how that actually play, play, plays out uh, and what it is that we want to do with that. But um, with all of that said, stream is not over. Um, we are going to wrap here um, in terms of... Um, in terms of the actual 